Question number one, why are we here uh, in this situation, not only with the climate and worldwide, we are facing today? The answer is thanks to scientific and business and technology growth. When did it start? It started around more than 100 years ago when humanity was facing, the scientists were facing something extraordinary like we're facing in daily lives today and they didn't understand what was happening with the physics of elementary particles until they understood that what must be changed is a very important thing the way we think we have to change our logic we have to change our common sense because the behavior of elementary particles is completely different than the behavior of big classical so that was when the quantum physics was created. And it was created by because great geniuses, starting from Albert Einstein, Paul Dirac, and others, Schrodinger, they were brave enough to change the way they think. As a result, the next less than 100 years, we, have, we saw this phenomenal growth. Phenomenal growth in technology, business, computers, anything that is around you during development, as always happens in the first industrial revolution, second, third, fourth, you name it. In the future, I don't believe there'll be no six, seven, because we'll be living in a world where there'll be constant revolutions. And I call it rapid evolution, R evolution, which is R, rapid evolution, which means revolution. So it will be revolution happening every month. So we are in a position that new technological advances, new ideas and everything will be happening so soon. But in the meantime, we, while doing that, burning this, burning that, burning coal, well, started damaging the climate. We were not only damaging climate, we were damaging also the environment. People don't speak about that. They speak only about the climate. But the reality is that we are damaging also the environment by throwing chemicals, which are damaging, the rivers and so on, by doing nuclear tests and creating huge environments where the radiation is so high that people are suffering, there are illnesses. So we're damaging the nature, we have damaged the, the climate, and now here we are. We are living in a world where not only have problems with the climate, but we generally have a problem. We have a problem because it's a world that is less predictable, unpredictable. It's a world that is interconnected, interlinked. Uh, and it's, it's a world that creates a lot of sort of a feeling of uncertainty. It's a world that populism has grown so much worldwide. It's a world that we have a lot of questions that are not answered, even in countries like Europe or America and elsewhere, where basically the classical democracy that was every five years elections. So people were, were going to an electoral box and voting and then waiting another five years to express their ideas. Now it's voting every day five times, not every once in five years, but every day five times on the Facebook. So things are changing. And that creates a feeling of uncertainty, unpredictability, a lot of fear as well. So one of the problems is the climate. So, how do we resolve that? I was lucky as the President of the Republic of Armenia, I was representing Armenia in Glasgow at the, at the climate uh, summit. And I would tell you openly that I'm happy because we made a progress there, basically in a form that a lot of institutions, organizations, international organizations, including charities and NGOs, have made a commitment to support climate, climate credit, climate so on. So, but where is the final solution? Because that conference is going to come to, to Abu Dhabi as well, soon, in two years' time. So, where is the solution? I think the solution is, and will be, when the doors of climate resolution will be opened for technology, because technology was the problem that created it, was the source, was the basics, because we had all of this growth using technology and damaging the climate. So the solution will be with technology, but the solution will be also 
in a way and then the day when the doors of climate solution will be open for, for businesses. When doing, creating a business, a product, industries will benefit more doing it in a way of green rather than black. Do you understand what I mean? Doing in a form that it will be sort of friendly to the nature, to the, to the climate, rather than... So the moment is much more profitable. There are trillions of dollars available worldwide, both in public and private sectors, that can go into this business, and they can basically help to resolve the climate issue. That's the way forward. I think just appealing to people, appealing to their mind, to their common sense, appealing to their soul, appealing there to their humanity is, is absolutely necessary. But will that resolve or not? We are living in a world that is driven by technology and, and business and economy. So I think we have to open the doors so, to the business. And I'm, I am absolutely convinced that the moment these doors are opened, and to open these doors, I think international community in the, in the form of different states, international organizations, have to agree that these are the new rules of behavior. And then technology will have the capacity. And of course, there are many ways of doing that. And one of the ways I will just give you uh, an idea that I presented at Glasgow was converting debt into climate activity. We all live on the same planet. It doesn't matter where we are planting a tree. Am I right or wrong? You see, if, if oxygen is produced, it doesn't matter if it's produced in Emirates, in the neighborhood in Qatar, or in Siberia, or in China. Because we breathe the same air worldwide. Okay? But uh, damaging, also the same. When we damage the climate here, we damage everywhere. So there are a lot of countries or organizations that are producing CO2. They are committed to the change, but of course, change, any change, needs time. Our life today, well, let's say 30, 40, 50 years ago, was completely black, burning coal, mostly, and then oil. Now it has become a bit more grayish, because we are using energy of sun, energy of wind, we are burning more gas than oil, the oil that we are burning is more sort of a sophisticated, it's cleaner, so it has become gray. But our target is to become what? Green. On the way from the black to the green, we need time. And any solution which is environmentally friendly, and some people think that nuclear is also a solution because it doesn't damage the climate. Some people are afraid of nuclear because they think that it can damage the nature. So I, I, I'm not going into that debate, but we need time for that. And we need an effort. And one of the efforts is, if I'm a small country that doesn't have a big, big problem with climate or, or climate credit, there's a big country that is burning coal. They need time to convert their coal industry into sun one. So the problem came with a huge growth of industry and technology. And the solution will come with the huge growth of technology and openness. And of course, as it was in, uh, in the case of physics, one has to change, first of all, not the technology, not the tools, but has to change here. The way we approach, the way we approach the world, the way we approach our business, the way we approach our life, and we want to have a, a, a world where, where our children will live, and that will be a, a, a world which is predictable, stable, sustainable, healthier. This is, and the solution again is, not in the money, there are trillions of dollars available, not in the technology which is there, it's here. So I wish all of you healthy life and try to live an, with an open mind. And you always know in your personal lives and on the lives of your nation and state, in the life of this planet, there's one thing that we have eventually to force. That's our ideas, that's our brain, the way we think and the way we approach. So let's be very, very pragmatic. 
to make this world a sustainable one. Thank you very much. <laughs>